Hello and welcome to another live daily English lesson, AM language style. So, um, I hope you all had a really good weekend. Hope you had, um, well, I hope you enjoyed the sun. Um, it's really hot at the moment. Terribly, terribly hot, actually. Um, is it stifling hot? That's the question. If it's stifling hot, it means it's just almost too hot. Um, stifling. Stifling hot. It's a good one uh, to, to know. Um, but yeah, at the moment, it's, it's, it's definitely the time of year to be by the seaside, uh, to be swimming, and hopefully the sea is cold enough. I went swimming on Saturday, and I don't think the sea was, was cold enough, actually. I think it was just still, um, yeah, I think it was too warm, actually. Um, so yeah, anyway, so that's the word I'm going in with at the moment, stifling hot. It is stifling hot. So when it's really hot, uh, almost too hot, maybe you might find it difficult to breathe. We can say it is stifling hot. So it's a good one to know. Let me know who's watching. Um, today we are going to have a look at, um, we're going to look at um, the second conditional. So that should be good. Um, now, I don't know how many of you will have looked at the second conditional yet, um, but it's a really, really good one to know. It's an important conditional to know as well. Arena F says, good afternoon, Richard. Good afternoon, Arena. Welcome to today's after uh, lesson. Evelina says, good afternoon in Sicily. Uh, it, today, it is, uh, it, uh, it, today, it's too hot. Ah, it is also. I will go with, it is also hot. Yeah, I can believe that, Sicily. It is next door to uh, Malta. And it's definitely stifling hot. Um, but I imagine, I don't know, because Sicily, there's more land. So, and there's more of a coast. Plus, you have Mount Etna. I'm sure there's still some parts of that. Of Actually, I don't know. I have been to Sicily in the summer. And I remember climbing up Mount Everest. And in, the, well, this time of year, you can climb pretty high and it's still really hot. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely um, full-on summer at the moment. So, in today's lesson, we are going to look at the second conditional. And the second conditional is a really important conditional to know. It's how we can talk. It's actually one of the best conditionals you need to know when talking about different situations hypothetical situations and different ideas um, and it's certainly we end up using a lot of what ifs as well it's you can talk about um, situations that are potentially realistic um, and you can talk about things that are completely unrealistic but the important thing to remember is that whatever you're talking about in the present, when you are using the second conditional, whatever you're talking about is very unrealistic to happen in the present. And that's a really important thing to begin with. Alejandra says, hi. Ooh, Alejandra, buenas tardes. I think that was good afternoon in Spanish. Um, Oksana says, good afternoon, Richard and friends. Good afternoon, Oksana. No, I don't know good afternoon in Japanese. What do I know in Japanese? I know konnichiwa. That's what I know. Um, I think that's about it as well. I think that's the only word I know in Japanese. Um, so, excellent. So, let's have a little look. And we'll dive straight in and we'll just look at the what you'd say are the important things to know about the second conditional and that you need to know. So the first things, how do we make a second conditional? Well, uh, you can either use if plus the past simple uh, plus would 
class infinitive. Um, the infinitive form of the verb without two most of the time. Yes, in fact, always without two. I should put that in. After would, you don't use to. And that's a really important thing to know. Please do not put the preposition to after would. So that's one way of writing it, such as if I won the lottery, I would, what would I do? I would go traveling, for example. Um, I can also write it in a question. So if I, uh, I might put my WH question. Um, so my WH, WH question um, plus uh, would plus infinitive plus past simple plus what would you do if you couldn't go? Ah, wait a minute, that's a point. If and plus past simple. So this would do this would look like what would you do if you won the lottery? Now you'll see there's a big difference. If I start my second conditional with if, then before I move on to I would, then I need to use a comma. But if I'm asking a question, I don't need a comma. Okay, so those are two simple examples. Now, why, when do we use the second conditional? First things first, uh, whatever you are talking about in, that, in the present is very unrealistic, okay? So whatever you are talking about in the present is very unrealistic, meaning it's very unlikely that what you are talking about is going to happen in the present. However, you are talking uh, about hypothetical um, situations, ideas that may or may not be realistic. Um, so, for example, just to, just to give you an idea, a realistic hypothetical situation, a realistic, realistic hypothetical situation would be what would you do what would you do if um, a flatmate got um, if a flatmate got COVID for example so that could be your question it's a, real, it's a realistic hypothetical situation it's and depending on how uh, many numbers, obviously, that goes up. But that's a realistic one. It's a situation. Um, it's not realistic in the moment in terms of you are with someone who uh, has because you don't know it. And that's the important thing. The reason why you are using the second conditional is because you do not know. You do not know if your housemate has um, COVID, for example, you do not know. You might be waiting for the results. So it's hypothetical, but it's a possibility. Then we can also talk about something that is completely impossible, such as, um, let's say, what would, what animal would you be if you could be an animal for the day? Now, of course, it is impossible for you to be an animal for the day, but 
in this hypothetical question, you can think about which animal you would be. Now, you might be asking as well, why are we using would? Well, would is probability. And the reason why we're using would is because we are saying that in our hypothetical situation, I am very certain or certain that I would be this, or I would do this, or I don't know what I would do, which is why we do it. So, which is why we use it. Evelina says, if I win the lottery, I would like to travel all over the world. Now, Evelina, what you have made is what we would call a, it's a form of a mixed conditional between the first and second. So to create a second conditional, you just need to change win to one. Uh, into, but yeah, I think that's a good answer nonetheless. I would like to travel all over the world. That's a good answer. Well done. So I'm now just going to give you guys some questions that you need to finish off. Um, or sentences you need to finish off, and then we're going to go into a question and answer session. Arena says, if I won the lottery, I would buy a yacht. That's a fantastic answer, Arena, um, and I think that's a really good answer as well. Well done. It's grammatically perfect, and um, I agree. I think buying a yacht would be very nice. Um, I, you know what? It's great for social distancing during covid if you're on a boat, not a bad place to be. So let's have a little look. Can you try and complete the following? Now, I should say this, by the way, guys. When you use if, there's only one modal verb you can really use after if. And that is could, because could is the past of can. But that's the only one you can use. I cannot say if I would. I cannot say that. Um, I can only really use could. Uh, I can't say if I should. No, I wouldn't use if I should. I would have to say if I were. Um, if I were. Actually, I'll introduce you to one more kind of second conditional, which is this. There's another option, which is if I were to, let's say, the question is this, but it would it'd be asked with an if question. So if you were to see your ex again, what would you do? And your response could be, if I were to see uh, my ex again, I would say hello example. Now, this is a very rare bit of grammar, but we can go with if you, if, if you saw your ex again, or we can go with if you were to. Then you go into like an infinitive. It's a slightly different one, but you can use it. If, so if plus were plus infinitive. Infinitive, uh, comma, plus word, plus infinitive. So it is an option. Bruno Okada. Hello. Good afternoon, Bruno. If the COVID is over soon, I would go to Malta for study English with you at AM Language School. Thank you very much, Bruno. Really, really close as well. Um, what you'd have to change is this. So don't forget, the first part needs to be in the past. So you would say, if COVID were to be over soon, following the structure I've just shown you, I would go to Malta uh, to study English, uh, with you at a um, language, which is then a really good sentence. Um, now, on Wednesday, if I, if, no, is it tomorrow? I think it's tomorrow, actually, guys. 
I am going to do a lesson on prepositions and verbs because the verb changes if you use a preposition. Um, it's not always the same as the infinitive. So that's something that we're going to look at tomorrow. But thank you very much, Bruno Okada. Thank you very much for that uh, sentence. There's a lot of good things with it. So try and complete this, these next sentences. Let's see how you guys do. So let's start off with, if I... Uh, I... Well, we know we're going to use would. Uh... Let's go with this. Okay, guys, see if you can complete the sentence. If I go home, I would in a month's time. Now, um, in the first part, don't forget, it needs to be past simple, and the second part needs to be in an infinitive form. You can see the verbs, so you need to think very carefully if you need to change the verb at all. If it's the first part, it needs to be in the past simple. If it's the second part, um, maybe not. Let's see what you guys come out with, and then we'll develop this for a little bit, and then I'm going to ask you some questions in the second conditional, and you guys can also ask me questions in the second conditional. I think there's a Beyonce song with the second conditional. Yes, there is. There is a Beyonce song in the sec with the second conditional. I don't really listen. I don't listen to Beyonce actually at all. But I remember she came out with a song called "If I Were a Boy." Yes, that is. Yes, that's a song. That's a good song to listen to um, regarding how to use the second conditional. Alejandra says, "If I could go home, I would." left in a month's time. Really, really close, Alejandro. You got the first part absolutely right. Don't forget, the second part is would plus infinitive. So if you're going to use the infinitive, the verb needs to be in the present. Verb in the present. Um, Irina says, if I could go home, I would leave in a month's time. Uh, Belina agrees with Alejandra. Um, Oksana says, if I were to flight in my country, I would, I will hug and kiss my family, every, my friend. Really close. Let me, let me look at this now. So in the first part, all of you got could right. So could is the correct answer for the first one. In the second one, it has to be leave because leave is the infinitive form of would. So, if I could go home, I would leave at the end of next month. Uh, oh, sorry, in a month's time, sorry. We're going to do this again, but let me just answer Oksana. So, you're really close. Now, don't forget, if I were to, if you're going to use were to plus... Uh, verb in the present. So you're going to need to use the, um, the, the infinitive. So here, in terms of what you've written, you write, if I were to fly uh, here in my country. So if you're going to fly, you're going to use prepositions like if I were to fly home, if I were to fly to Japan, if I were to fly back to my country, if I were to fly back to my country, I would, don't forget, would is the hypothetical modal verb here, so I can't use well in this situation. I would hug, I would hug and 
kiss my family and friends. Um, family and if you want to go with everyone, then you have to go and every and every one of my friends. So that's what you would end up going with. But really well done, Oksana, there. Really close. I like what you're going for. Let's try again. Uh, don't forget, if it's the would, the verb needs to be in the present form. So, if I... Uh, there we go. So... Let's go again. If I something, an expensive car, I would an Aston Martin. So it's the same verb, but one needs to be in the past, one needs to be in the present, and we need to think really carefully. So don't forget, the first one needs to be in the past because you have if plus past simple. The second one, that should be in the present, because you are, it, the structure is would plus infinitive. So let's see how you guys do with this one. And then we'll look at questions and then we'll go into a, a discussion where I will ask you guys some questions and you can ask me some questions as well. It's important to drink when it's hot. Finish one bottle. Oh, you're really, really close, Alejandra. Really close. This time you got the second one correct. The first one, what you're going for there, you, you, you're halfway between making a past simple and a past perfect. You don't need to go for the past perfect because if you go for the past perfect, you would have to write had driven. But we don't want had driven. Um, we, you've got the verb right in it's meant to be drove. So you don't need the had here because this is just the second conditional, not the third. So if I drove, that would be the correct answer. So you're really, really close, Alejandra. Very well done. Okay, let's go for one more. What? Let's go with the question, actually. Okay, let's see. What phone would you, mm, if you, mm, a new phone tomorrow? Have a go. Uh, let's see how you do. Think carefully again. And then we'll have a little look at a question answer session. So don't forget, if you've got the would, the verb needs to be in the present form. If you're using if and the verb is coming after, here in the second conditional, that needs to be in the past simple. Let's see what you guys come out with. Um, but yes, going back to something I said earlier, Beyonce does have a song called If I Were a Boy. Um, I would, how does, how do the lyrics go actually? If I were a boy. I would. Da, 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 da. I can't remember the song, to be honest. Like I said, I I can't really say that I know Beyonce very well. Um, I just remember seeing that she's got a song with the second conditional. So Irina says, "What phone would you buy if you could get a new phone tomorrow?" Perfect, excellent. That is the correct answer. Very good. 
Alejandra Bycud, perfect. Well done, Alejandra. Excellent. Well done. Okay, so we're doing well here. Let's now explore this. So I'm now going to ask you guys a question, and you guys can answer however you like. So, Oksana says, if I were to drive an expensive car, I would like feel such an Aston Martin. Really close. First of all, the first part, well done for experimenting with word to drive. And that is good. That's, that's acceptable. This, that's, that's correct as well. I would, here you need the, a verb. So I would drive an Aston Martin. I would own an Aston Martin, for example. If I'm going to use feel, usually feel like come after after one another so if i were to drive an expensive car i would feel like then you would have to change this to i would feel like and then you're gonna to have to use driving this is a word pattern um and aston martin now you might ask why would that have to be driving it goes back to some basic verb patterns such as like doing like driving, uh, like watching. Um, so instead of I would like to drive, you would say I like driving, I like watching. So it goes back to those very simple verb patterns that you look at uh, in elementary um, and you continue to look at in um, in pre-intermediate. And I know some of you are in pre-intermediate. So well done. Now, if you are in pre-intermediate, you will learn about the second conditional. Um, and if you're intermediate or if you are up intermediate, you will need to know the second conditional. Okay, let's go into a question answer session. I am going to ask you guys a question and you can answer. So if you were famous, what would you be or what would you like to be famous for okay now if you want to reply with i would never want to be famous that's fine but you've got to use would and the important thing here is when you answer a question uh second as uh, with the second conditional you've got to make sure you've got wood in there so if you were famous, what would you be? What would you like to be famous for? If I were to answer this question, uh, first of all, I wouldn't want to be famous. But if I were to be famous, I would like to be famous for. I don't know. Actually, I would like to be famous for for plus verb ing verb ing that's a that's an important thing that's actually a bit of a, a clue for tomorrow verb patterns so if i were famous i would like to be famous for being a a writer an author uh someone for writing books um yeah i think that'd be okay if you're famous for writing a book, people don't need to know what you look like. Um, so, yeah, I think that would be okay to be famous for uh, if, you, if you were famous for writing a book. Um, maybe a chef. I mean, I don't cook. But, yeah, I think fame. I don't know. I think certain jobs would be really difficult if you're famous. Um, I mean, like an actor as well. I mean, if you're famous, if you're a famous actor, it's probably very difficult to go um, to a restaurant or a bar just to have a nice drink. I think it would be difficult to enjoy some of the simple things in life. Um, now, if you're not sure how to answer that question, let me ask a slightly different question which if you maybe if you feel more comfortable answering, which is if 
Um, what animal? Oh, here we go. So Alejandra has a question. Sorry, I'm confused. Was Aisha he it? Yes. Were you they? So why do we use, ah, why do we use if? What a fantastic question. Alejandra, that's a superb question. Well done. It's an excellent question. Simple answer. Were is formal in uh, conditional sentences. And most of the time, it is the grammatically correct option. And that is why. So, were is formal in conditional sentences, but most of the time it is the grammatically correct option in conditionals, in conditional sentences. Really important. So, it's the rule for it. You are right, Alejandra, with what you've written but it just changes when we are writing in a, in a conditional and especially a second conditional. But that's a fantastic question. So most of the time, Alejandra, you are going to be correct. But just remember, when you are writing a second conditional, that's when you are going to have to use were. Um, Irina says, if you were famous... I would like to be famous for playing the violin. Oh, that's a lovely one. What you would need to do is just think about your pronoun because you are talking about yourself. So, yes, you've noticed it. Well done. Okay, let me ask you guys another question, which is, uh, so Irina says, if I were famous, good, I would like to be famous for playing the piano. Really well done. Well done for using for playing as well. Excellent. Let me ask you guys another question. If you were to, if you were, if you were to, okay. If you could get a new pet, what pet would you Get. So if you could get a new pet, like a pet cat, pet dog, uh, what pet would you get? If I were to answer this question, I would say if I could get a new pet, I would get a pet dog, specifically a Bernese Mountain Dog. Um, a really nice sized dog, similar size to a golden retriever, I think. And um, it's the dog is black with a few brown uh, bits and with a white um, belly, with a white stomach. They have a short lifespan. They only live for about six or eight years, but they're beautiful dogs. And really loving dogs. Uh, so I would go for a dog. Um, yeah, I think there's something very special about dogs. Um, cats, I don't mind cats. But if I were, I would say if I had a cat, I would want a cat with a personality like a dog. Um, I know a I have a friend who has a cat who acts a bit like a dog. Um, the thing is, is that uh, dogs like to come to you. They like to have, they like to be stroked and hugged and played with. Cats mm, only when they want something, I think. Uh, so Irina F says, if I could get a new pet, I would get a Thai cat. A Thai cat. Nice choice. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go for another question. And then I'm going to ask you guys to try and ask me a question. So if you could live and work in any English-speaking country, what, uh, no, which country would you, would you live in? 
But if you could live and work in any English-speaking country, which country would you live in? Alejandra says, if I could have a new pet. Oh, okay, you've deleted it. Let's see what you come out with later. But you were right to begin with. If I could have a new pet, I would get whatever. Okay, so, but yeah, this is my other question. If you could live and work in any English speaking country, which country would you live in? Now, you can include Malta, because <coughs> Malta is uh, technically, uh, an, as well as speaking Maltese as their national language, Malta is classed as an English speaking uh, country. So you can choose Malta. You've got the UK. Ireland, Canada, the USA. I'm not sure about Costa Rica. Costa Rica. I know Costa Rica have a very, very. Is it Costa Rica I'm thinking of? That has a really close relationship with the United States. Um, I think it is. In fact, I think they might even be a state, uh, like a distant state or something. I know they have a very, very close relationship with the United States, but I need to remind myself what that relationship is. I think it's changed slightly in the last four years. Irina says, if I could live and work in any English-speaking country, I would live in the UK. And Alejandra says, if I could work in English, I would go to EEU. Um, ah, actually, you know what? Ah, Puerto Rico. That's it. Thank you very much, Alejandra. Thank you for reminding me. Puerto Rico is the country I was thinking of in the end. Yes, thank you very much. I was getting confused with myself there. And yes, it is definitely Puerto Rico. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, it is different. Yes, Costa Rica is definitely different to Puerto Rico. Absolutely. And the geographically not in, not quite not close to each other either uh, apologies i was thinking of the wrong place got them the opposite way round in my mind uh sandra says if i could live and work in any english speaking country i would live in malta like you richard and there we go yeah you can work in malta absolutely um alejandra said okay if i could work in english i would go to EEU. Yeah, if you're going to use e something like EEU, the e EU, um, UAE, uh, when you have those abbreviations, USA, that, that is when there will be the article the in front. Good question, guys. Okay, let's see if, if you want to ask me a question you can do. I'm going to ask you guys, though, another question, though, which is, if you were a drink, what drink? Um, yes, uh, yes, no. They, when you start looking at the Caribbean, it can get a little bit uh, confusing. Which where the which where countries are roughly? Um, I'm pretty good. I'm actually pretty good with my geography, but I think the Central America and uh, the Caribbean, the order of um, from north to south. I know my geography, that's probably the one of the weakest parts that uh, I get a little bit confused with in the order of, of the countries as they come. So finally, if you were a drink, what drink would you be? Uh, now, I have to say this is, um, I quite like this question. Um, actually, it's a good question as well. Uh, to break the ice when meeting people on a night out. Now, for me, my answer to this is if, if I were a drink, I would be... I think I would be an Italian wine. In fact, I think I would be an Am Amarone red Italian wine. I think that's what I would be. I would be an Italian wine and I would be an Amarone. Um, if I could be a drink. Um, what I would say is pick a drink that might uh, say something about your personality. That's the point to a question like this. So maybe if you have, um, let's say if you have a, if you are dangerous on a, on a night out, maybe 
you would be a tequila. If you are relaxed, maybe you would be, if you are a relaxed person, maybe you would be a beer. Yes, Alejandra, a beer is a good option. Um, if you, um, let's see, what other drinks are there? You've got cocktails as well, like mojitos. Um, yes, if you, if you are a fresh, energetic person, maybe you are a, um, what are they called? A smoothie for example, you've got lots of possibilities. Okay, really good. Irina says, I would be a champagne. Ah, yeah, I, you don't need the article there, but champagne. So, sh so, Irina, if you are champagne, I would say, so, Irina, are you a bubbly person? Now, a bubbly person is... Um, um, now, bubbly are the bubbles in champagne, the white. So a bubbly person, by the way, it, it's, a good, it's a good term. Bubbly person is someone with a lively and energetic personality. So it's a good answer. Bruno uh, Ocado says, if I were a drink, I would be a gin and tonic. Gin and tonic is a fantastic drink. Very good. Um, uh, the question I would say is, and, and then you can say, well, what sort of person is a gin and tonic? I think a, a, if you are a gin and tonic, you're a person who who likes to start the evening. Because I, in my, I would say gin and tonic is someone who likes to start the evening. Uh, gin and tonic for me is usually the first drink I have in the evening. Uh, so, yes, you're the person who likes to start the evening. Evelina says, I will be a lemoncello. Of course, you're Italian. Um, and a lemoncello um, is refreshing, uh, wakes you up. So by saying you are a lemoncello, again, Evelina, I think you're there. You would be saying that you are a, um, a, an energetic person, uh, a person who is lively and uh, likes to... Uh, likes to do things. So that's a good one as well. Um, if you said a beer, then to me, it's like you're, you're probably saying that you are, um, you are a relaxed person. Um, you enjoy uh, relaxing. You, you, liked, uh, you like to, you like your free time um, and you like socializing as well. So all of these are good positives. Interesting how no one here has said a tequila. Um, what drink would I not be? I definitely would not be a Zambuca. I don't like Zambucas. Um, I, you know, I think it's the taste of licorice in the mouth. It's just not, to, it's not the greatest taste. No one has said rum. No one has said rum. Um, what sort of person would a rum person be? I think a person who's a rum person is someone who is, is a good person to be with when, when going out, but you know that, uh, they, um, that they can turn the evening round very quickly on its head with crazy ideas. I think that's a rum person. Well, guys, that's bringing us to the end of today's session. Um, I'd like to thank Irina, um, Evelina, Bruno, Arcada, Alejandra, Sandra. Have I said Evelina? Yes. Um, Oksana as well. Um, I think that's everyone. If I've missed out anyone, apologies. But thank you to all of you have, who have written in the live chat comments really good thank you very much um if you haven't uh, uh if you haven't uh, and just watching thank you very much for watching make sure guys that you like the video um subscribe if you're new share the channel uh with friends um and don't forget if you want to find out more about lessons at am language especially during covid um, make sure that you go to our website. You can always find the link to our website in the description as well.
You two in arena, have a good evening. You two, Evelina. Um, you two, Bruno. Yes, absolutely. Hope you come to uh, Malta soon. Um, and everyone, have a really good evening. Stay safe. You too, Alejandra. Thank you very much. And I will be back tomorrow at four o'clock at the same time. Um, and just to remind you, tomorrow, um, it's a really good lesson tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. It's prepositions with verbs. How do we, how do we write our verbs when we have a preposition? Really important. And how do we know what preposition to use? That as well. You too, Sandra. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you so much. And yeah, see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Stay safe. Bye for now.